Hey everyone, it's Julian from Digital Trends and we're here in a Volvo car checking out some new enhancements to this car, specifically in the infotainment system. You might think it's Android Auto, but it isn't. I'm here with Dylan Thomas from the Android Auto Partnerships team and he's going to run us through some of the key features of this car. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thanks for the intro. We're going to show a couple of things. Uh, some of them are around Android. So this is running Android P, as you just indicated. It's actually a system running Android. It's not. There's no phone involved here. Um, and the second thing that we're pretty excited about this year is introducing not just maps and the assistant, but also the ecosystem in the shape of the Play Store. So I'll show you those in a quick run through. But first of all, let me kind of point you out uh, how Volvo's used Android to create this user experience that they call Census UI. Um, just like Android on a phone, they have uh, some system user experience or UI components, but they're at the top in this case rather than the bottom. So I could look at the rear view camera, the apps, the users, and vehicle functions. Um, there's elements of this uh, like notifications so that you know an Android developer writing an app should expect that if they send the notification it'll show up somewhere. Right. So that's kind of a key part of this is this seamless integration of apps. The second thing is uh, integrating with the vehicle hardware itself. So down here we've got uh, um, the uh, HVAC or the uh, comfort controls. And this pipes down all the way through to the vehicle hardware in a way that's very standardized so that regardless of which car actually um, you want to change the temperature in, the, the app calls the same API to do that, then it can talk with the, the different hardware on a per OEM basis. So this isn't really Android Auto, right? This is a custom version of Google uh, built into this, or Android specifically, I suppose, built into this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little nuance there is that, yeah, so Android Auto being the thing I would like plug my phone in and project something into the car, almost regardless of what the OS is in the car. Right. We are showing today the Android operating system is in the car. It's powering this whole experience. So this, this screen right here is actually an Android app. Right. It happens to be one for HVAC, but it's an Android app written by the Volvo team. And you also specifically mentioned that if you do this, you get notifications. Yeah. How much of this is uh, tied to your phone in that, say, for example, um, is it limited to, I know it's a Google Play Store is available as well. Mm -hmm. So can you actually install, for, for example, like Facebook Messenger? Would you get notifications like that? Would that be distracting? You know, uh, how, how is it limited in, in yeah. the certain types of apps you so can install? A, so, yeah, so the, well, there's a few questions in there. So number one, yes, there is a there is an ecosystem, there's a store. In fact, let me just show you that. Um, if you go down here to look at all the apps that I've got installed, there's a new one. Um, now this is uh, uh, something we're working on actively. Uh, but this is the Google Play Store for automotive. Okay. And you can see, to answer your first question, uh, is it all the apps? No, it's the ones that are going to work well in an automotive setting. So here are sort of the essentials, the most popular. Uh, streaming. It's really uh, funny that there's the New York Times. you got to <laughs> get the news when you're in the car. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, messaging, okay. uh, media, and, and you already pointed it out well, is that these today are the, the apps that do work on Android Auto. Right. And the reason they work in this car as well is because they implement the same APIs. Okay. So that's powerful for developers where they, 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 they do one piece of work and it now works on any of these Android automotive surfaces. Okay. Um, so that's one. And then, yeah, so I could install an app here. Uh, um, here, I mean, it's already installed Deezer. I can uninstall it. Um, and it's user choice. Okay. So, you know, there's what's come, there's what comes with the car, and then there's what I, as the owner of the car, want to bring into the car myself. Okay. That's, that's the real power of the ecosystem, is the user choice. So for both Google, as an app developer, for Volvo as a provider of a device, and the driver, they all get what they want. Right. So they get the built-in apps, like that, <laughs> which is important. Um, but then the ones that they want to bring in as well, like the maps and the media apps and so forth. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and then the second thing you mentioned was the notifications. Right. I think that's an area that's evolving. I mean, we've got to figure out what's a good, safe experience there. The, I think the point is that we've built in the right fundamentals into the operating system, the right hooks for it. And then we've got to work closely with our OEM partners to, to, to figure out what's a safe experience there. Okay. Because clearly, you know, bing, 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 right. bing, bing, bing is not good. Right. On the other hand, not getting a notification that you're, you know, a notification saying, hey, your oil is running low. Right. is kind of a problem. Right. There's, some, there's something in between. Well, so I saw some of those messaging apps, for example. Mm -hmm. So how intensive, like if I'm 
having a conversation with someone. I know yeah. the, the idea is that you can press that button and actually, can you actually do that with third party applications, for example, or is that something they have to develop for using Google Assistant APIs maybe in yeah, the Yeah, so, the, so the, the, the Assistant is what we use um, as kind of the UI, right. if you like, for messaging apps. Um, so that should be pretty seamless. I mean, you see that today in Android Auto, in fact. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in terms of notifications, I think one of the things we've done um, today is you can mute a conversation. So if it's just getting distracting or too much, you can just say, "Hey, I'm I'm done. Right. Let me let me just let me just mute that one." Um, so again, we haven't we don't have the full story yet because the car isn't in production. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that we have the right safety in mind. Uh, that's that's the number one job, and then we can back off for that to what seems reasonable for the user. Cool. So, um, yeah, but then we could step through a couple of apps here. So we looked at the Play Store, which is sort of bring the ecosystem. Awesome. Um, we've worked pretty closely uh, on Google Maps. The team has spent a lot of time making sure that this fills this great big screen here. Um, what's interesting in cars, actually, is that unlike phones, which are all sort of like black rectangles about that big, is in cars, the screens have lots of different sizes and shapes. Right. So we want to make sure that we make the best use of that, like big fonts, uh, the right colors, and so forth. The second part, you want to look over at this screen in front of me here is the cluster display for the driver. And the Google Maps app is now capable of generating two screens worth of content. Wow. One of them is highly optimized for driver view. And uh, so as I, for example, go home and start navigating, you'll see that the main screen I'm going to navigate, and this will start to indicate the current route for me. Um, so if I now, on the main screen, like you as the passenger, you're playing the music, you want to be the DJ, what have you, I'm not losing this critical information right in front of my eyes. Right. Um, and we get a notification here of a turn. So then I'm going to go... Yeah, right. So let me, let me go back to the main screen up here um, and turn this off uh, and go look at some other items that we've got going. Go back to the home screen. This tile UI, again, Volvo's UI concept, um, also supports switching between apps okay. in the media frame. Right. I can instantly control apps. I don't know if I turn the volume up there or not. Um, and the other part too is these, as I mentioned, these sort of these icons or these actions provided by the developer of the app. Gotcha. Um, and then we can go into this screen and look at sort of the, uh, the Pocket Cast app, in this case, sort of the media browsing area right. and the individual uh, track that I'm working with. And again, this idea of the overflow. And this is specifically that app, right? Yeah, exactly right. So it's this app being sort of presented in a template designed by Volvo. Because, you know, if I buy a Volvo, I want it to feel like a Volvo. Right. Um, I don't want it to feel like an Android phone. Um, but if I'm using Pocket Cast, I also want it to be like Pocket Cast. Right. So that's a really interesting uh, sort of two, two ideas to balance at the same time, and I think we've pulled it off pretty well with these API-based approach for the developers. Okay. Um, and if I just uh, sort of switch over to messaging, I mean, it supports phones. I, I got to clarify, it's not it's not being powered by the phone. I and mean, if this was uh, not an Android phone, for example, it would still integrate well with Bluetooth. So if I wanted to uh, send a, um, I don't know, Welcome to I.O., let's be original. Um, like this and send a message on this phone, then the phone that's paired with the car gets it, okay. just like you would expect in a regular system. And uh, I can then, it's kind of quiet, but oh, it, it, read uh, it, 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 it read it out to gotcha. me. So we're trying to be less distracting. And in Volvo's idea here is that, you know, rather than give you an option to type a long <laughs> message, uh, it's just to say, great. What is that specifically? It's a it's a it's a person holding a steering wheel oh, with their I head. See. I think it's a yeah right. Gotcha. And and so that of course came over here from the the person. Right. Up, right. At the same time, there must be a way to use Google Assistant to talk to it or something. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, don't have it uh, connected for this demo, gotcha. but yeah, for sure. Right. I mean, this is something that's possible today. Right. Um, I mean, to the phone in the car. Yeah. And then when you're pressing and holding that button, that's I assume this one. Yeah. 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 So if if I go and say, uh, tell me about eco driving mode. Eco driving mode adapts the car for more energy efficient and environmentally conscious so driving. So that's how you launch it. Now what's interesting about the thing that just happened there is that there are some things you say to the assistant that are just generally helpful, like uh, 
play the song that goes ground control to major tom. Okay, Space Oddity by David Bowie. Here it is on Google Play Music. He was searching a back catalog there. <laughs> um, and so it'll, it'll start to pl play that. But the first thing I did was actually something that's, a, that's a configurable for the OEM. So that's something about my car right. that I need to learn that's not just any car. Right. And so the other thing about cars is that they're really shared in a way that phones aren't. Um, and so uh, a lot of times you want to switch out who's driving. Um, so if I go to Emma jo Johansson here, uh, if you keep an eye on what's happening to my driver's seat. So cars do that today, so it's good that it keeps working, right? There's a, there's a button here for this kind of thing as well. And that's her preferences, right? Um, yeah, and this is preferences in the car. Right, yeah. built into um, those numbers. Yeah, um, but what's cool is it's been driven, driven by the Android side, and what's even better, I think, is that it will pull up the maps locations for Emma, It'll figure out that uh, she prefers radio on this station. It's going to connect to her phone. It's going to kind of pair to her phone, and it's going to load up her calendar. Um, so this is, this is the kind of thing we really feel is almost the ultimate goal, where right. when I get into a car, whether I have to press a button here or it's because I'm carrying my phone or it's got my key fob or something else, it just adopts my personality. It t my content comes in. It fits me. And when I leave, it should all go with me too. It shouldn't get left in the car. Right. So in a shared car setting, you know, you have this great experience. And when you leave, you're not worried about it. You mentioned a lot that, you know, Volvo's UI here. Yeah. Um, it makes it sound like obviously this is going to be a thing that you guys are going to sort of ship to different OEMs, like oh, yeah, different course, manufacturers. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's going to be the standard base layer. And then mm -hmm. they're free to customize that well. Yeah. Um, When's that sort of, like, I know, is Volvo going to be the first one in 2019, I believe, to come out with this? And, and do you have other partners signed up already, or? Um, well, I mean, I can't really talk about which other partners we're working with until they decide they want to announce something. Um, but uh, yeah, I think if you talk to Volvo when they want to launch, um, that's a, probably a good next step on that one. But yeah, I mean, it's Android open source. I mean, it's, uh, it will ship um, the same time as Android P, because it is Android P. Right. Um, so anyone can take it at that point, and there's a, there's a lot of interest in the industry. And what does that mean for the sort of old Android Auto side of things? Like, obviously oh, yeah. that's going to rely on mm -hmm. older cars, so obviously you need a newer car to experience this kind of technology. Yep. Um, does that mean anything different for the Android Auto no, team? No, not really. I mean, we basically have this, this idea that we want a safe, seamless experience for every car like connected in every car and if that means you have a phone that you have a safer um, view on like we have today that's okay if that's what works in your car cool if you have a car that has projected and you have your older system and you can project maps or music in there great that's what you that's what you need if you have android built in we feel like that's going to be a more seamless experience right because you're not switching between systems right. as you like so yeah we, we feel like there's a there's a there's a sort of a, a a scale and a continuity there that that meets people where they are awesome well thanks so much yeah thanks a lot thanks. appreciate it cheers